Hello, hello everyone. Hope you're having the best day. I am just out for a walk and I felt very inspired to come on here and chat with you all. So if you're on here, say hello. And if you're catching the replay, hello, hello. Uh, so this morning um, I was out um, chatting with a couple friends and hi honey, so have you're on here. Hi Joseph. Um, I was out walking with a couple, um, walking by myself, chatting on the phone with a couple friends and we were having some really epic conversations and it was kind of like a reoccurring theme that kept coming up today and that I experienced a lot in my own personal life as well. So I wanted to just have a conversation about it because I feel like it's something that a lot of people will relate to. Um, over the last few years, I've been diving a lot into understanding more about traumas and mini T traumas and how they accumulate over time. And then eventually like they actually show up in a way that is very debilitating to us living our lives. And from my own personal experience, it showed up in a way where I would be doing things with friends or um, when I would go out like to go on dates or in the workplace or all of these different things. And I would literally feel like I was like moving like molasses. Like I was too afraid to move because I'd be afraid of, oh my God, what's somebody gonna say to me? Something gonna reject me? Something gonna judge me? Um, am I not good enough? Oh my God, what's on the other side of that thing that I just don't know, that fear of the unknown? And these are all subconscious patterns that are always running in the background. So a lot of the time they can be kind of sneaky and we don't even recognize what they look like. Um, so a few things of like how they could show up in your life. Um, when I started getting back out dating, I was so triggered by men. Um, and it was all because it was bringing up all of these past insecurities from all of these traumas, right? And who here can relate to that where you're like, you're like sending a text and you type it and then you delete it and then you, you're like, oh shit, no, don't be stupid, don't be stupid. Okay, text it again and then you like literally end up not even being yourself. And it literally strips away our authenticity, all of these mini T traumas that we've experienced. And when we talk about trauma, I know from my personal experience, especially being a paramedic, my mind was very closed off to um, saying that I had experienced trauma in my life. Because when you looked at my life, it's like, oh wow, she lived such a great life. She's had like middle class family. When they were kids, they had like a, a brothers and sisters and lots of toys and material stuff and had a great family that loved them. And growing up, I had everything, right? And it's like, all of these things we have to start understanding is that these mini T traumas, this is a human experience. This is an, um, like, especially the emotional traumas um, because those are silent, right? They, they go on inside of our heads for so long that the outside world doesn't actually see them, right? And this is why we need to stop judging books by their cover, right? We, see, we hear that all the time and it's unfortunate that especially right now it's coming out so much where people are being so judgmental because we're experiencing traumas. The last two years, guys, have been traumatic. Yes, humans are very resilient and we go about moving through our, uh, our lives in a way that's going to give our body the least discomfort. However, it's been a traumatic time. The world is shut down. You have to wear a mask on your face. You, there's like all of these things going on in life. It's traumatizing for everybody. You know, we're having to be careful what we say because we don't want to offend this person and this and that. That we're now stuck in that like, we're frozen. We're literally like oh my God, like I can't do anything. So I'm just going to curl up in a ball and not say anything because then I don't have to worry about it. However, that's not living, right? That's not thriving. That's, that's just surviving. And yes, we can sink down to that, that state of survival. Our survival instincts are, are mainly what our brain does, right? And we like to think that because we're humans, we're very sophisticated, very intellectual beings, that these survival instincts do not affect us. However, our reptilian brain, that's exactly what it's there for. It's there to keep us safe. And that's always our number one priority. That's always our mind's number one priority, right? And when we can start understanding that and start living in a way where we're trauma informed, we're informed on our traumas, right? When our minds are creating all of these crazy stories, about being paranoid about this, about fearful about that, about worrying about this. this. Our minds do that as a protection mechanism. That is because of the traumas we've experienced. And when we can start understanding that, we can start working backwards, right? Because you'll always hear me say, right? If you wanna change your outside world, you have to change the inside first. 
And um, I think before, like, I didn't really know how to communicate this stuff because it was so new to me. However, Mercury retrograde's gone and the communication's coming out a lot better now. And to be able to explain that, right? Like, when you look at epigenetics, epigenetics, if you want to look that up, basically you can change the coding of your DNA. And from that place, you can literally change anything in your life. That's why humans can be, do, or have anything that they want in their lifetime, right? You look, whatever that dream is, that aspiration you have, there is somebody else in this lifetime that has done it, which means that it's possible, right? It's possible. So what are they doing that is allowing them to get where you would love to go? And that's the thing is we have to start understanding that when we look at the most successful people in the world, they're all doing very similar things, right? They're all very spiritual tapped in people. And people are, there are so many things about being a spiritual person because the way we've been conditioned. However, all that means is that they're self-aware. They're self-aware to what's going on inside their body and also on the outside and how they interact. It's about having a knowledge of how they interact, right? So when it goes, when we want to change our outside world, we have to change our inside world. And in order to do that, we have to start becoming aware of things, right? So like I said, all, a lot of those fears are stored in, the, in our subconscious mind, right? Our mind can only take in cer a certain amount of information. If, if our minds took in everything that was going on around us in one moment, I think we would probably just be like seizuring on the floor, like legit, because there's just too much information that we can't process it, right? So our bodies, our minds have to take in this information and filter it, right? Your reticular activating system does that. It filters all of these things and it filters them through your, your thoughts, your beliefs, your core values. And this is like how you actually see things. And that's why you'll, you'll hear people say, you're only seeing the world through your perception. And we're all living in this life, looking through a different lens and a different perception because we've all experienced different things. We've all experienced these different mini traumas or maybe big traumas. And we're all seeing the world a different way, right? That's why you can have two people looking at the exact same thing. You ask them what they both saw, they'll see two completely different things. Does it mean that they're wrong? No, it doesn't, right? It just means that they're different, right? There's no such thing as right or wrong. It's just things are different and that's okay. And so when we can understand that, in order to change our outside world, we have to start changing what's going on within. And in order to do that, we have to start changing our thought patterns, right? We have to actually bring awareness to them. Am I speaking nicely to myself or am I putting myself down all the time? Because I used to put myself down all the time, right? And that's, it comes down to a lot of the emotional traumas within our, our childhood. And um, it's been really interesting now getting into emotional clearing work and seeing how these, these traumas right from our childhood, sometimes, sometimes they're in the womb, like literally zero. <laughs> it's crazy how our bodies and our nervous systems hold these traumas. And then it impacts us over and over and over again throughout our whole entire life. And it's like a backpack, right? You're wearing this backpack and this backpack, you're just, okay, you are like so excited about something. I'm like, this is so great. You know, like I'm going to do this. And then somebody's like, mm, that's this. Oh, that's, mm, nope, that's not right. And then all of a sudden you just shut down. That's an emotional trauma. And that gets stored in your nervous system and you live through this over and over and over again. So next time you go to share something that you love, you're naturally going to have that fear, safety, remember, that your body isn't going to want to share it. And that's why you have that hesitation, right? Yes, DNA memory, exactly. And so when we are doing that, when we can start bringing awareness to our own selves, how many times are you wanting to say something, but you don't? How many times is your mind creating stories that aren't quite factual um, with actual physical evidence? Um, for example, um, you could be having a conversation over text with somebody and then your mind through your lens perceives something. And then, yeah, Joe, that's a great point. I'll talk about that as well. Um, you perceive something and then you get triggered by it emotionally in your body because you think they're meaning something. And then you get mad at this person. You do this, you do that, you do this. And you don't actually take the time to ask questions. That's why questions are so important. And being curious again, like a child. 
being curious like a child and looking at the world in awe and wonder and being like, wow, not every human is out to get me. Wow, let's just ask more questions. Let's start exploring again. Let's start understanding people's per perspectives and let's go into conversations, being open to where the conversation goes and not going into a conversation with an expectation of where you want it to go. That is huge, right? And to touch on what Joe just said, um, generational trauma, it gets passed down from generation to generation to generation in your DNA. And I'll give you an example of that too. Because um, even just behaviorally, not even, not even DNA wise, which they have shown that, that it does um, carry down that way as well. But even behavioral wise, um, for example, my Opa, um, he came over from Austria. My Opa and Oma came over from Austria when they were pretty young. Um, I think they were maybe like in their 20s, something like that. And when my Opa tells stories of his own father trying to like literally kill him, <laughs> like literally trying to kill him. He had to jump out of a second story, his bedroom window in order to escape from his own father. Okay, this is the types of traumas that humanity has experienced in the last century. This is a lot of the stuff that we don't forget. The traumas that have happened, there's, this has been a very violent planet. And now we're shifting out of that into the more the intellectual mind, hence the age of Aquarius if you're into astrology. It's now bringing in community and actually commu like talking about things and being more intellectual and having open conversations and vulnerability instead of not having the words to communicate and then getting frustrated, those emotions coop up and then we get to violence, right? And so when we look at that, my Opa, he wanted to do better. Humans always want to do better. They're always doing their best. So he wanted to do better. When he had my dad, he was not violent with him. However, the thing that did get passed down was he was so hard on my dad, they had a, a deli. Um, both of them were butchers, so my dad took over the family business. And he was so hard on my dad, so hard. It didn't matter what he did, nothing was ever good enough. And this wasn't intentional. Like my Opa literally thought that he was doing the best for his son. And that's how my dad felt. He felt like he was never good enough. Um, my Opa didn't know how to communicate and give directions when he was learning things. So my dad was expected to just know exactly how to do things without being properly trained how to do them, right? And then so that my dad with us, my dad is literally the most agreeable, almost like too agreeable. Like I think I was almost like a little bit, I'm an Aries, so fire sign. So a little bit too, too forward with him sometimes. Um, but he is just a very quiet, mellow guy. Um, never emotionally abusive, um, nothing. Like he, if anything, has to maybe set a little bit more boundaries and, and protect his own energy a little bit more. Um, and then for me, that made me feel like my dad didn't care. <laughs> I grew up with so much resentment toward my dad because I thought he didn't care because he didn't verbally say things, but he would do it with his actions. He would change my snow tires when I needed them. He would basically anything that I would ask for, he would always help out with. And that was the way that he did it, which is why it's, it's so important to ask questions because when we can stop um, assuming what people are going through or what people are experiencing, when it's an inner world that we would never ever know what somebody else is going through, right? We can't read minds. Yes, some of us are very empathic. We can sense energies. I know I definitely can, but even in that space or that realm of sensing energies, there is so much more dialogue that has to go on where us as humanity have to learn how to communicate a little bit better in order to start understanding this. We need to start having more open conversations, which is why I'm so excited because I'm getting my podcast back up and running, which I'm probably going to be launching um, in January. But just having more of these open intellectual conversations around topics that we normally don't talk about, about topics about sex and about relationships and about um, trauma and addictions and really being able to see humanity and humans in their beautiful light that they are because when we can start seeing that we've all got our shit we've all got our shit you know that's that's where humanity's at and it's about moving forward how can we be more innovative how can we look at the way and look at the world in a way that is going to support people and bring people together and bring inclusiveness and compassion and love and empathy. This is what the world needs. And this is what the world's being called to do, right? 
So, and it starts with us individually. We can keep pointing blame at other people for not doing this and not doing that. However, how can we personally take responsibility and remembering that if we want to change the outside world, it starts with us on the inside. How can I start changing my thoughts? Maybe it's, I just want to spend a little bit less time with other people and I want to be more by myself and going out in nature and just being with myself to start bringing awareness to it. Maybe you want to start journaling. Maybe you want to like start having these conversations with friends, right? Just to see what you think like they're doing to help themselves in, in their growth, right? When we have these conversations, we can start learning more about ourselves and more about other people. So how can you now start bringing more awareness to your inner world so you can start shifting the outer world because that's, that's what we're being called to do, right? We're being called to really hone in on our own dreams, our own goals and our own aspirations and start breaking through all of these generational bullshit toxic patterns, right? It's not okay to have, like, be so toxic and violent in your words and aggressive. Like, it's not okay, right? So what is the way that we can start coming from our heart space? So I would love to know your feedback on this. Um, thank you for all of you guys that were on live with me. It's so nice to see all of your beautiful faces. And um, if you guys have any questions or any comments or anything that you want to share, feel free to put them down in the thread. This is always an open conversation on my platform. Um, and also if you want to send me a DM too to chat more about it, that's always welcome. Um, but just keep doing your absolute best, guys. Times are not easy and there's a lot of shit going on in the world. So just keep honing in, keep refocusing in, reel your power back in every time you get distracted on the outside world reel it back in. Okay, what can I do? Okay, what can I do? Okay, what can I do? And eventually you're going to start seeing that shift where things are going to start showing up for you. And the universe is always here for you. All of these lessons that we're learning, they're here for us. Even though sometimes they're showing up as these really difficult looking lessons, they're always here working for us. So just keep reminding yourself that. And I love you guys. You're all amazing. And if you ever want to chat about anything, just know that I'm here for you. Just shoot me a DM. If I don't get back to you for a while and it's urgent, feel free to send me an email. Um, or you can just go on my website. My website is up and running now, guys. So you can go check out all the services that I offer. Um, lots of amazing things on there. Lots of different free resources. All different um, price points for everybody. And um, we've also got some really cool stuff coming up for our education as well. To really get, gain a greater universal understanding of kind of what we're going through right now and how we can take responsibility for ourselves and reel our power back in and start creating the life that we actually desire and the life that makes us happy individually regardless what it looks like from the outside looking in right that's the cool thing about humans is that we create we're creators and our lives are a reflection of the creations that we create so if we're not happy with where we're at in our personal lives then this is where we have to take that radical responsibility and start making that change rein it back in and start becoming that creator of your life again because we're all so capable of creating the most epic abundant life that we could ever dream of or imagine and i truly do see that for humanity and that's where we're going so um, i love you guys so much you're doing absolutely incredible and um, i'm here for you and um, i hope that you guys all have an incredible weekend but i'll talk to you guys later bye guys Mwah.